I'm John Pollock and welcome to Fight News Now. Coming up over the next hour, we'll be tackling all the major news items going on in mixed martial arts and the combat sports world. John Ramdi and Robin Black and myself, we are going to be discussing George St. Pierre and his recent training video that surfaced online from Open Mat here in Toronto. We'll also be discussing some of the changes to the February 6th card and the addition, we assume, of a new pay-per-view coming up on Memorial Day weekend in May. Plus, a lot more to discuss, including Bellator's first card of 2016, which will feature Paul Daly, Chris Honeycutt, Paul Bradley, Ryan Couture, and more. All of that coming up over the next hour on Fight News Now. Here with John Ramdean and Robin Black for Fight News Now, chatting all of today's news. The UFC, they've changed a bunch of cards. So now we have UFC Fight Night, Hendricks versus Thompson. Now what was UFC 197 becomes UFC 196. So theoretically, May now, Memorial Day weekend, they were not going to be running. And now it appears there will be a pay-per-view because you got to all lead into UFC 200 in July. So some math problems they had to deal with. I, I, I don't care. It Conor McGregor is still fighting Rafael Dos Santos, right? Whether it's at but it's 196, 196 now, not 197. They're still fighting. Yes. Holly Holm, Misha Tate, still fighting. Correct. Woo! Thank goodness. So basically, what we're seeing is that you are not losing a pay-per-view. No, you know in what I fact, mean? you know it's very difficult to just take a pay-per-view off, and at least they can go to their cable companies and say, "Listen, we're taking this off pay-per-view. It's a weaker card that we're going to put on free mm -hmm. television. However." you're going to get a pay-per-view that was not on your books for May, and it's going to be a much bigger card than what this card would have been, been had we gone ahead with it. Yeah. They are probably like, cool, <laughs> yeah. do that, give us something in May, and the, we're all happy. The scenario you're always looking for is everybody wins. Oh, fans will be happy with this, they get a free card yep. and a better pay-per-view, they win. UFC, hey, we get the same thing, but we get the same amount of pay-per-views, maybe it'll be better, they win. Cable provider goes, oh, cool, we got the same thing, only be better, they win. Good job. Stipe Miocic gets nothing. Yeah, <laughs> he'll get his shot. He's, he, he's, Damn it. He stepped up to the table. Damn he was it. ready to go, so the UFC is going to reward him. Does yeah. Miocic leapfrog Cain Velasquez for this title? Uh, again, it depends on what happens. It depends on... This if, is said to be a pretty serious back injury that Cain Velasquez then is yes. dealing Then with. yes, I would expect that's the case. If Cain Velasquez, over the next number of months, after if Fabrizio Verdum is ready to go, and Cain Velasquez is another four or five months uh, out from being ready to face off with the current champion, then yeah, Stipe Miocic will get the next shot. That's, I'm sure, with the UFC. Yeah, will unless Josh Barnett <laughs> or, or Alistair Big Overeem Ben resigns. Uh, or, or Overeem resigns, or, or Josh Barnett or Big Ben have a, an, an audience imagination capturing performance. Other than that, yeah, our man Stipe will get it. Another man who wants a title shot immediately is Jose Aldo. He says he is- Ultimatum. Well, he comes back and he says, I'm only coming back for a title fight unless it's Conor McGregor and then it doesn't have to be for a title. So he's, he's leaving his options open. I guess in a perfect world for him, he's fighting Conor McGregor for the featherweight title. And he was under the assumption that this was just a given. This yeah. was an absolute, complete, utter just dismay. The fact that it's even a debate that he would not get yeah, the next I, title you, fight. You have to understand the reason why. I think if you walk into many mixed martial arts academies, whether, whether it's the highest level, the TriStar guys, American Kickboxing Academy, or unless they have a grudge against Jose Aldo, many people believe that Jose Aldo should go down as one of the top three or five greatest fighters to ever compete in mixed martial arts. The fact that he has done what he's done in the sport in both the WEC and the UFC has a victory over Frankie Edgar, has that uh, a stoppage win over Chad Mendez. This huge fight with Conor McGregor, I think he absolutely deserves to get another shot at the 145 pound championship or Conor McGregor. And the UFC knows it, it'll do huge business. Well, yeah, it will do huge yes, business. Yes, it will. Then sure, they're down. But, you know, being, getting what you deserve based on merit is what we'd all love. But the Which world, well, the world doesn't work that way. Like, the greatest musician of all time can't go back and say, well, you know, I want this, if they were the greatest selling records 10 years ago. The, it's all based on what you're doing right now. And that is not me making an excuse or not me saying it should be this way. This is just how it is. You need to have some type of leverage. If your leverage is, Everybody wants to watch me fight 
the metrics here show that when I fight, they pay lots of money. That's how you go in and, and in a capitalist um, society that we live in, you go in and you say, when I fight, they pay, you get it. Any other thing, I'm the best, or look what I've done. I wish that was true, but that's not true. So you have to go in with the proof. When Mayweather goes into any negotiation, <laughs> he says, I will have this many people yeah. uh, pay to watch me fight. Yes, you will. Let's make a deal. It's all based on that. Yeah, and I, 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 I think I, Jose Aldo, especially if you look at the numbers in Brazil, his numbers are through the roof. On top of that, you sell the rematch of Jose Aldo saying, you know, I just got drawn into his game, just like everybody else. I promise it won't happen again. Uh, I slipped on a banana peel. I've never done that in my entire career. 13 second stoppage. Let me avenge that loss. Why did you slip on it this time? Because I bought into the hype. I mean, again, they can quickly spin things yep. to have people convinced that saying, look at he managed to go 25 or 25 minutes with one of the greatest of all time in Frankie Edgar. He looked strong. He looked mentally tough. I just bought into something. I just wasn't prepared for this mental warfare because I it's, thought you were was, the greatest. Sure, but I've never had to deal with it. This is this makes me stronger. It was a new element that I've never had to deal with before. I've I've embraced that and I'm going to move forward and I'm not going to let it. What a shoulda coulda. Me. That's just I mean. Sure. If, again, if you can make an audience believe it, it'll work. If, it, if an audience doesn't believe it, it really doesn't matter because every single person that's ever lost has had a reason that they lost. And they all want to do over, whether it went 25 minutes, whether they, and um, uh, Chris, Chris Weidman, Weidman yeah. does not say, oh man, I got into my, he doesn't make any excuses. But he wants he a said, rematch. He wants a rematch, but he's not basing it on, well, I, made, I slipped on a banana peel. Losing in the most important fight of your life and literally collapsing is not something that went wrong. It's something that was done to you. It was something that was done to you by a mentally superior athlete. But, I'd love to see it again. True. But can he do it again? But now it, it's even more pressure. Now I really got to prove something. Now I got to erase that. Now I got to make sure that doesn't happen again. Now I got to worry. Like, it's harder even this time. Sure, but at the same time, you look back in history, like Mark Hominick, for example, in that fight with the Korean zombie. Nobody anticipated that. That's something that we've never seen before. It seemed like Mark Hominick yeah. slipped on a banana peel. Yeah. Would he allow that to happen again? Again, he was dealing with a lot of things mm -hmm. in his personal life. Mark made... Hominick will tell you that he had a mental failure exactly. that night. Exactly. So, so did but Jose But a mental Aldo. failure is not some random thing that happens any more than, oh, I, I missed the takedown. Right. It's all in preparation. It's all in, in becoming a, the greatest fighter you can become. It's, a, it's as true a failure as, as not moving your head when somebody threw a right hand. It's as true and as factual and as real a failure. But can you write that wrong? You can, but there's no guarantee it's harder yeah. next time. So how important is it that this title remains with, with Conor McGregor? Because be believe me, Jose Aldo going after the featherweight title, to me, this is intrinsically linked to fighting Conor McGregor in the rematch. Jose Aldo on his own, he needs that dance partner. Mm -hmm. And Jose Aldo was not someone that was ringing the cash register during his, hey, great run as featherweight yeah. champion as he had. But box office wise, mm -hmm. it took Conor McGregor for people to watch this guy in mass. So that's very important. And what all of this circles around is the fact that that phone call sounds like it's going to be made to Frankie Edgar at some point. And I guess the newest executive, that's your task. You, you're on Frankie Edgar duty because we've had to make that call to him many times yeah. saying, yeah, you know what was promised? That great Chad Mendez win <laughs> out the window. It's back to the drawing board and we've got this featherweight lined up for you. Yeah. That's the reality that of things reality. because you walk in here with very little leverage and metrics and pay-per-view buys, that's real leverage and quality wins. Great. That Frankie 25 has quality cents wins. Yeah. Phone and so call. does Jose Aldo. Aldo. Yeah. What'll do bigger business? And we're not saying that's the way it should be. We're saying that's the way that it is. So you have to operate within those parameters and win within the rules of the game. And the rules of the game is sell me some pay-per-views, get me some audience interested, and you'll be fighting for the title too. All right, let's uh, move on. George St. Pierre was recently in town here in Toronto training with our friends at Open Mat. And the video has surfaced and of course, Everybody takes everything as a sign. Of they do. I mean, is this shocking? We know he's been at TriStar training religiously. I mean, he's been in the gym. It's not like this guy has been 
off playing Mark Hamill in Star Wars in a mis mysterious, unknown location. Yeah, I, think I mean, should we be reading as much into this as a guy going and sparring? No, absolutely no. not. And again, he wasn't sparring. That video is just him hitting pads with a friend of his who was a training partner. And uh, again, the shout out to the guys at Open Map. But I think George, all you have to do is look at his history. This guy is a lifelong martial artist. Mm -hmm. There are many fighters that get into this sport because they were a college wrestler. They want to make some money. Well, this is the way you can make as much money in athletics as humanly possible. You know, maybe some guys have tried the football route. That did not work. George St. Pierre is a martial artist at heart. It doesn't matter if he's got a fight coming up. He wants to be the greatest martial artist of all time, whether the lights and the cameras are on or if it's just in the gym, in the academy with his peers and friends. And if people have a lifelong obsession with mastery of anything, their closest friends are involved in that yeah. too. You talk to the best video game guy in the world, all his friends either make video games or design them or play them. Same thing with George. He's developed, the, the man's name is Jorge. He's a brilliant martial yeah. artist in his own right. You may never Never see him compete, but he's a brilliant yep. striker. He's close friends with George. It's as simple as George saying, "Hey, Jorge, I'd love to come to Toronto. Yeah, come ch uh, hang out with me. We'll go out. Why don't we train a little while you're in Rashad town?" Rashad Evans is coming yeah, up. Rashad to Evans work will with be Jorge. in town next yeah. weekend. Although that one suggests to me a little more, like, <laughs> "Hey, I need a good training partner for wrestling." Good stand-up guy. That one, having just said, it could be a couple of friends hanging out, hitting pads. That one starts to make you think, wait a second, he's inviting guys up to. Still, could be a bunch of friends getting together, yeah. and when the friends get together, they train their martial arts. But it also could be more than that. And fans are just, they want any, any snippet of information regarding George, just the slightest hint. And believe me, it's not as if they just started filming him without asking, saying, hey, George, can we post this? Yeah. I think George loves this attention. I think he loves the idea that this video is going to cause such a stir. Everyone's going to be talking about me. Here we are. And everyone knows UFC 200. Is this guy going to come back? Maybe, maybe not. But it's just it's throwing more fuel to the fire. Yeah, and one of the reasons why is we had a chance to talk to some of his teammates who said, George is still making a boatload of cash right now not fighting in mixed martial arts because of all these different sponsors and everybody that wants to take care or associate themselves with the champion. The beauty of that is George will fight if George loves yeah. the idea of fighting and for no other reason and that's how the best fighters fight. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for us. Be sure to tune in on Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern time for our preview show, counting down to Anthony Johnson and Ryan Bader in Newark, New Jersey.